Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to take a look at a recent study that was released by PNAS. So this is a major uh, genetics journal and it was released and it took a look at the genetic origins of the soldiers of the ancient Greek army that fought in Sicily, specifically around the site of Hamera. So these ancient Hellenic samples date to around about 480 BCE which is quite interesting and remarkable. What's critical here is that these results indicate that the soldiers of the ancient uh, Hellenic armies were of diverse backgrounds, some being closer to Northern Europeans, others being closer to Caucasians, whereas others are closer to Greeks, and a few are even closer to the uh, Iron Age Saka as well as their the central steppe nomads, which is quite interesting and remarkable. Critically, what this means is that these ancient Hellenic armies were diverse. Now, the authors claim that this is due to them hiring mercenaries, but another explanation could be that this could be largely due to foreign settlement among the native Greek population, as well as their existence, a major uh, uh, caste divide between the upper and lower castes of ancient Greece, whereas the upper Greeks from the ancient era would be closer to the northern Europeans, whereas the other Greek soldiers could be from the lower classes of ancient Hellenic society. Now what's critical here is that Lazaridis claimed that this proves that there is a great degree of genetic continuity present among the Greeks which is interesting but nonetheless these uh, samples are much closer. The majority of these ancient Greek soldiers are much closer to the Sardinians as well as to the islander Greeks and the mainland Greeks tend to have more step than these samples. So they have more step or Indo-European ancestry than these samples and this is likely due to uh, one of the reasons is this is probably due to a first this case divide so over time the a higher case assimilated the lower case and it mixed with them or it could be due to a later slavic migration which increased the step answer present among the greeks of today so that ends this phase of the video the next phase of the video will take a direct look at the study and prove that the myth of greek genetic continuity persists in modern day academia which is quite interesting and remarkable so up first we have the uh, study in question. So the study was titled The Diverse Genetic Origins of a Classical Period Greek Army. So this took a look at the uh, genetic origins as I mentioned of the Greeks, the ancient Greek soldiers that fought in the Battle of Himera. So moving on from that, the next bit of this study, this is the abstract and what's critical here, the abstract states that uh, reporting genome-wide data, so this is just the highlight, reporting genome-wide data from 5th century soldiers who fought for the army of the Greek uh, Sicilian colony of Hamera along with representatives of the civilian population nearby indigenous settlements and 96 present-day individuals from Italy and Greece. And then it claims that unlike the rest of the sample, many soldiers had ancestral origins in Northern Europe, the steppe and the Caucasus. So this is quite interesting and remarkable. So critically what this means is that this could likely be due to the fact that there was a lot of foreign settlement among the Greeks and the fact that there were northern European sample sequence here means that there must have been a case divide within the Greek army and within the hierarchy of the Greeks with some Greeks being closer genetically to northern Europeans and other Greeks being more Mediterranean in genetic origin. So that ends this phase of the video. The next phase of this video will take a look at the principal component analyses from this study. So here you can see the uh, uh, principal component analysis and what's critical here is that the majority of the Hamera samples cluster with other ancient Hellenic populations which is interesting. So you can see this includes the soldiers as well as the civilian population which is interesting and what's uh, sorry the soldiers from both the 480 BC and 409 BC as well as the native civilian population. So what's critical here is that the majority of these samples cluster with contemporary Greeks which is interesting so they, though they are divided into groups so you can see one group clusters with central northern Europeans which is interesting that's group two and then group three clusters with northern Europeans specifically those from north eastern Europe and then you can also see group four clusters with steppe populations so these are central Asian steppe populations which is interesting and this is interesting so this is uh, means that these uh, samples had a central Asian genetic origin and group five they cluster with Iranian and Caucasian populations which is quite Quite interesting and remarkable. So what's critical here is that you can see in this PCA there are different population clusters with some clustering with northern Europeans, others clustering with Greeks, some clustering with central Europeans as well as a few clustering with the uh, Iranians and Caucasians of today. 
So critically, these results indicate that the majority of the uh, the samples from these sites cluster with the Greek subtotal, which is interesting, though there were obvious uh, outlying groups. So that ends this phase of the video. The next phase of the video will take a look at the data from the paper, including the autosomal breakdowns done from this paper. So currently these samples are not available in the G25 database, but once they are available, I will make another video breaking these samples down individually. So up next, you can see that this is the breakdown. So you can see here, highlighted are the group four and five. So what's critical here is that these uh, samples had more Caucasus under gather ancestry and also a bit of East Asian ancestry, as is the case with group four. But what's critical here is that these samples fall within the Iranian sphere and are largely descended most likely from Iranians, which is interesting. And one of these, uh, the Caucasian Iranian individual is also a low coverage individual. So what's critical here is that you can see that these uh, Iranian samples as well as these steppe nomad samples from Central Asia have a clear Caucasus undergather or the Iranian element which is much higher than the remainder of these populations and their ancestry. So once uh, these samples are on the G25 calculator I'll break them down but what's critical here is that you can see that they nonetheless have more Hellenic ancestry than the Tian Shan as well as the Central Steppe and the Western Steppe nomadic populations but what's critical here and what's interesting here is that these samples are largely genetically akin to Iranians as well as steppe pastoralists from the uh, uh, late Bronze Age, which is interesting, late Bronze and Iron Ages. So these steppe pastoralists were heavily beamacized at this point, hence why you can see elevated Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. Please keep in mind that this study did not take a look at the Iran Neolithic ancestry present in these samples, but nonetheless the Caucasus hunter-gatherer component is very similar to the Iran Neolithic component, which is interesting. So critically you can see here that the other samples and populations are present as well and you can see for the majority of these Himera samples you have what's critical here and what you can clearly see here is that they're largely akin to other Hellenic populations of the modern day though nonetheless they seem to have more Mediterranean ancestry. So you can see that their mo the overarching component here is the Mediterranean element followed by the Caucasus undergather element then the uh, Western undergather element which is quite interesting. Though with the exception of the highlighted samples here which are closely related to Iranians and Iranian nomads, the other samples are largely closely related to the Greeks of today such as the soldiers from uh, 480 BC from Hamera, the cluster one as well as the 409 BC cluster. But what's critical here is that some of these samples such as those belonging to the third cluster have more Nordic ancestry. So these could be part of an ancient Hellenic elite among the troops who uh, were there in uh, Hamera fighting during that time. So in other words, this data supports a case divide among the noblemen as well as the soldiers of ancient Greece. So up next, we have these findings highlighted here. So the first of these, it says in QPD, uh, sorry, in QPADM, their ancestry is consistent with around 85 to 89 percent deriving from I essential steppe nomads and 11 to 15 from an Aegean-like source and a mixture that plausibly could have taken place among the genetically diverse populations of the steppe. So this here is talking about those uh, uh, populations found that were closely related to the Iron Age uh, uh, Tian Shan nomads as well as other central steppe nomads. So this is likely an Iranian element and you can see it made up around 85 to 89 percent of their ancestry with minimal coming from a Hellenic source. So what this means is that on a genetic level there were Iranians present among the uh, invaders who fought at Himera. So these were likely Persian uh, mercenaries who participated in this conflict and these likely originated from Central Asia from Iran as well which is interesting. So moving on from that the next uh, highlight here shows that finally one outlier falls with the modern Caucasian population and intermediate to the ancient steppe and Caucasus individuals on the PC and carries the highest proportion of the CHD component in admixture. So a single one may model with a group closely related to Armenia MB as the source fit the data. Similarly the second low uh, cluster sorry the low coverage individual falls closest to populations from the Caucasus on the PCA. So this of course refers to the Caucasian populations that I took a look at uh, based on the recent sampling done on these soldiers and these were among the highlighted populations that I previously took a look at. So what this means is that there were Iranians as well as Iranian related groups present among the armies of the ancient Greeks. So once we get these samples it should be interesting breaking them down using the G25 and determining how much Iranian or Caucasian or steppe ancestry they actually had. 
So that ends this phase of the video. The final phase of the video will take a look at a PCA from this study, from the supplementary information and prove that Iranians are actually closer to Europeans genetically than they are to Near Easterners, which is quite interesting and remarkable. So here we have a PCA and you can see here on this PCA you can see Caucasian populations are highlighted and Iranians clearly fall within the Caucasian cluster which is interesting. So Iranians are closest to other Caucasian populations including the Armenians and the Georgian Jews but they're closer to the Abkhazians, the Ossetians, the Balkar as well as other Caucasian populations and you can see that they're highlighted here. So you can see the distance between Iranians and Bedouin bees is the same as the distance between Iranians and Northern Europeans, Northwestern Europeans though nonetheless Iranians are a bit closer to northwestern Europeans than they are to the uh, Bedouin bee samples as well as other uh, Semitic related samples which is quite interesting and remarkable. So what this shows is that the Iranians of today are largely genetically akin to Caucasian populations and fall within the Caucasus cluster highlighted in red here. So in other words, what this means is that the Iranians of today are largely a Caucasian population with Caucasian roots, which is quite interesting and remarkable. And actually, there were admixture panels featured in the supplementary information here. I won't get into them, but Iranians had a similar genetic profile that was closer genetically to the Caucasians of today. Specifically, I am referring to the Caucasians highlighted here. So the Georgians, the Abkhazians, as well as the Chechens and the Ossetians and other related groups. And what's critical here is you can see that Iranians are not Arabs as they're fairly distinct from the Bedouin B sample and from Saudis. And also Iranians are not Europeans as this illustrates. So this evidence refutes the claims made by enemies of Iranians such as Jason Raza Georgiani. So overall, this video took a look at the genetic origins of the soldiers from the armies of the ancient Greeks from Himera, from the classical period, which is interesting and it proved that there is somewhat of a genetic continuity present among the Greeks of today, though there must have been an ancient uh, case divide due to the uh, separation between some of these samples who are closer to Northern Europeans and others who are Mediterranean in origin. What was also proven here is that there must have been some sort of Iranian element present within these armies as well as a Caucasian element which is why some of these samples are genetically akin to Caucasians and Iranians. So yeah that's essentially it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.